to Math 135. This is just going to be a short introduction. Our course is split up into two pieces. We have a La Lima site and we have a MyLab site where most of your assignments will be completed. So first let's go over the La Lima site. This is what I see when I open up La Lima. I have all my courses on the top. So we're going to go into our course, Math 135. And I'm going to change my view to a student view so I can see what you see. Uh, except for the red bar at the top, this should be similar to your screen. So right now we're on the welcome page. It has a little bit about myself in the middle here. And contact information. I'd like to go over the contact information. Right, so I do have an office phone, uh, but email is pre pre preferred, if I could speak. <laughs> Uh, what happens with uh, voicemails that you leave on our phone is that they're actually saved and sent to me in an email. I can't directly re retrieve phone messages. So instead of having you leave a voicemail, save, it gets saved as an email and then it gets emailed to me, it's best just to email me directly. I also have a physical office on the Windward campus. If you're ever on Oahu and you want to meet in person, we could set that up as well. And in fact, I do have office hours for a face-to-face -face Math 135 that I teach. Uh, every Wednesday, I have office hours from 1 to 2 for that class, so feel free to drop by if you're around. Then I have my email that I will respond within 24 hours, but notice it says excluding weekends and holidays. That's because I don't work on weekends and holidays. If you want to meet via Zoom, I have a Zoom link here. And you would just email me at least 24 hours in advance to set up an appointment. Uh, what you should do is give a preferred time, a day and time that you want to meet, and I will confirm it. Or if I actually have another appointment at that time, I will email back and give other alternate time, times or days that we can meet. So my normal working hours are here. It's Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, excluding holidays. So the next we, thing we want to do is we want to know how to get started in the course. Well, basically, you're going to read the Start Here page in the navigation bar. And then you're going to go to the syllabus and read through the syllabus. Make sure that you can take the exams at the scheduled days because they cannot be extended. Uh, from there, you're going to go into week one. So this class is set up in modules week one, two, three, and so on. I have the first two weeks open, and typically I'll be a week or two ahead open for those that want to read ahead in the weeks that are coming up. Uh, so we're going to go there, and then we'll discuss how to get started with the MyLab course. If at any time you have questions regarding the course, please email me. If you have questions regarding La Lima in general, there's a support link. And then for the MyLab program, I also have a support link as well if you have any questions. So on the home page you might notice that we have announcements and forums on the right hand side. So any announcements that I send out to the class, and I send out a lot of them, I usually send out announcements every Monday and sometimes on Friday and then if things come up I'll send them out during the week as well. So I send announcements out but I also send them out as an email so that you can either view it on this page or you can view it in your email. And we also have some forums in the class as well. So that's the welcome page. The next thing you want to do is go to start here. So start here just tells you how to be successful in the course. Don't forget to check in on the course daily, complete your weekly tasks. Try not to fall behind. It's really hard in a math class to catch up once you are behind. Uh, you're free to work ahead on your MyLab homework assignments. I should have them all posted up in a few weeks. I uh, just switched to a different textbook, so I'm kind of going through everything right now and playing catch up. But I should have the whole course up uh, and so that you can actually complete all your homework for the course within the next couple weeks or so. Uh, if there's something preventing you from completing assignments or if there's anything you feel that I need to know, uh, feel free to email me. And then CourseNet Technology, there's something I did want to bring your attention to and it's down here. La Lima will be closed every morning from 3 to 4 a.m. So if you are in La Lima working on something or uploading some work, 
be aware that at 3 a.m. you'll be shut out and you may lose everything. So just try to stay off or try not to start something at say 259 because you may get cut out. Uh, hardware software, it's best to use a desktop or laptop computer. Chromebooks are fine, tablets are fine, but once in a while you'll run into issues of running programs correctly. And you should have a reliable internet. Where to next? Syllabus. I want you to read through the syllabus. We're not gonna go through the whole syllabus. But you should read through the syllabus and double check to make sure that you can uh, take the exams when they're posted. Also, there is a rubric in the syllabus of how your points are awarded. So we have two exams, they're 100 points each. The final exam is also 100 points. Homework, there's roughly 35 assignments, so about 175 points total. We have two graded problem sets. Now the graded problem sets are written work. Uh, you could do them on a tablet or you could write it out on paper and then kind of scan or take a photo of the images and upload them. I will create assignment links for anything that is written that you have to submit. So those graded problem sets are so that you can actually show your written work. One of the course learning outcomes is that you can communicate mathematics in a written and or oral form. Uh, and since we don't do oral presentations in this course, to pass the class you have to demonstrate that you can write mathematics. Uh, we also have forums as well. We're going to have six set forums for the semester. The required material is just the IDAP that uh, we'll go over how you get registered for IDAP in just a second. But IDAP is um, online resources. These are charged to your UH account so you don't have to pay for them right away. And that's basically the MyLab program. So additional resources, at WCC we have the Capico Tutoring Center that usually opens up around the second week of classes. And these are online real tutors that you can meet via Zoom. We also have TRIO, if you're on Oahu, there are some in-person TRIO tutors that could help you. UH System Resources, there's OLA, which is the online tutoring program. I don't think they have their website up yet for this semester. There's also tutor.com, again, those are live tutors. I think they might be using Blackboard, so you may have to download Blackboard. Uh, and then there's also a distance learning homepage that's part of the UH system. Other online resources are down here. Symbol Lab, Wolfram Alpha, Desmos Calculator, Khan Academy. Okay, those aren't real life people. Those are just websites you can go to if you need some extra help. Your responsibilities, we already talked about this in the Start Here page is you got to have high speed internet connection, computer skills, check your emails, be self-motivated. Remember, you are actually self-learning. We don't meet in real time, so you have to be self-motivated and set adequate, a time, adequate study time. Typically in a math course for every credit, you should allow at least three hours of study time. So since this is a is a three credit course, you should have at least nine hours of study time a week. So down below is just some additional information, attendance, class participation, there is none. This is an online class, you just have to keep up with the required work. Final exam, it's cumulative, it's going to be timed four hours, you can take it on any computer, it's not proctored. As well as the unit exams, they're three hours timed, you could take them on any computer, not proctored. Uh, usually you'll have three to five days for the unit exams and four days for the final exam. Uh, something that I don't do is we don't do makeup exams in this class. If you can't take the exam during the three to five day window that it's available, then you will get a zero and there are no exceptions to this. Because of that, I have this policy that if the score that you earn on the final exam is higher, then your lowest unit exam score, I will replace your lowest exam score with what you get on the final exam. So in the event that you miss an exam, the score you earn on the final exam will replace that score. Or let's say that you really bombed an exam, do well on the final, the final exam score will replace that lowest exam score. The final exam will only replace one low exam score 
and the final exam is required uh, to pass the class. So a lot of students may ask, okay, I did well on my two unit exams. Do I still have to take the final? Yes, it's part of your grade. It's 100 points towards your grade, so yes, you do. And then there's my lab homework. Uh, the due dates are Sundays at 11.59 p.m. There is a very minor deduction for late homework. The deduction is just to keep, it's an incentive to keep you on task, but it's not really punitive. So look at this. It's a 1% deduction per day. So if you're a day late, you just lose a percent, which is nothing. And it's only a percent on the questions did you, that you did not submit on time. So you could have half your homework assignment done on time and just need to come back and do it later after the due date, that's fine. The 1% will only be applied to the questions submitted after the due date, so it's really minor. So there's really no need for you to ask for an extension on homework since the penalty is not bad at all. Just make sure that you don't go into submitting homework, you know, a month late because remember this is a percent per day. So those percents do add up. Graded problem sets, there's going to be two graded problem sets. So if we look at the graded problem sets here, those would be uh, problem sets I provide and then you would write out the solutions to them and then submit them. I'm going to create assignment links for the graded problem set so you can just submit it straight to the assignment link. We also have six forum posts and extra credit for this course. There's going to be an exam review on my lab for each unit exam and an exam review for the final exam review. All three of those reviews are worth 10 points of extra credit. Uh, we also have an end of semester student survey that's also worth 10 points of extra credit. And there may be other opportunities depending on how this class goes. Uh, academic integrity, don't cheat. <laughs> Disabilities, if you do have a disability, please contact Jodi Asato uh, and her contact information is there. Sex discrimination, gender bias, viol uh, violence resources. So this is our Title IX information and our campus advocates that we have. Uh, let's see, schedule. So these are our important dates for add drop, W, uh, applying for credit, no credit, and so on. Here's our schedule. This is uh, set for the semester. Uh, let's see, up oh, here it is. Exam one. Exam one will be available for you to take from 10-3 to 10-7. So it's going to be that week. So five days there. Exam two would be 11-14. So November 14th through November 18th. That's a five day window. The final exam will be the 12th to the 15th. That's a four day window. So the final exam is going to be available from a Monday through a Thursday whereas exam one and two are Monday through Friday. So just make sure that you can take the exams during that time. Remember, it's not proctored and you can take them on any computer. So I'm gonna close out this syllabus and go on to week one. So there's just a little welcome message. This is how the modules are set up for every week. There'll be at the top the title for what we're gonna do this week. And here, there's nothing due in week one. This is just a course introduction. Uh, a little bit of a description about what's going on. Under lessons here would be any links that you need to help with your weekly assignments. Uh, so there is an IDAP registration information for those that aren't familiar with how to register for IDAP. Uh, I'll bring this up in just a little bit. We also have this student participation verification, but that's not due until next week. Tuesday. So if you're not aware, we have a new policy saying that all instructors have to verify the students participating in their class. If the students have not participated, then they're supposed to flag them and they will be dropped from the class. Every instructor is different. Every campus is different. So if you're taking a bunch of online courses at different campuses, you will have to do a student participation verification, but it's going to be different depending on what campus. So I just want to caution you to make sure that you know what you're supposed to do to verify your participation. 
Um, for this class, it's fairly simple. All I want you to do is click on this assignment link. And, oh, you hear the chickens in the background. Uh, and all you have to do in this box is type in yes if you'd like to remain in the class. And I guess no or ignore this assignment if you don't want to remain in the class. You just type in yes and then you just proceed and it'll submit a yes to me. That's your participation. I'm going to close this out though. After lessons, which again is just stuff that you need to complete your weekly tasks, there's a weekly checklist so that you can check off items as you complete them. Now in this weekly checklist, it has read start here, uh, which we did, read the syllabus, which we kind of scanned through, uh, register for IDAP. Now that's important because most of your assignments will be through the MyLab IDAP program. And there's a MLM just means my lab math. There's a my lab math orientation that goes through how you answer questions in my lab and that's optional. It's not graded. If you're familiar with my lab, no need to go through that orientation. And then at the end of every module page would be a reminder of who to contact if you have any questions. So that would be the same that was on the welcome page. So this is our week one. And this would be week two. And again, I'm going to open up the weeks as they become available. Again, I'll usually be a week or two ahead. So in week two, we're going to go over sets, interval notation, polynomials, factoring, and so on. So again, a short description of what we're going to do. And in bold here, it's just a reminder that you have to submit the student participation verification by Tuesday. We have a forum. I have form instructions in case you need them. And then here you see R1, R2, R3, R4. I provide notes and videos for each section. Again, the book we're using is new to me, so I'm kind of making my notes and videos as we go along in the semester. And I'm hopefully gonna be at least a week or two ahead, but you never know. Sometimes it takes a while to make a video and upload it and so on. But just be aware that the video and notes are optional. They're not required. I just make them on my iPad. Sometimes it can be a little bit sketchy. Quality may be a little low. <laughs> it's, it's definitely not professional. So they're just optional resources that you can use in addition to what's already on my lab. And you're not required to do notes and videos. So what I do is, let me show you what I mean. The notes are just PDF notes. And all I do is I just record myself talking and filling them out, kind of like this video. So you could print the notes or upload them to a tablet and follow along with the video if you wish. I'm not going to open the video. The video will take us to my YouTube channel. Uh, I don't embed videos into my website because they just take up so much space. So it'll take you to YouTube. And now what I really want to do is go over to week one and talk about, sorry, I live in preservation land. I've got a lot of animals outside. Talk about the IDAP registration information. So this is just directions on how you register for IDAP. Uh, this was provided by the publisher Pearson and they used a UH course for this uh, these instructions. So you notice it says vital source for UH Manoa. Ours just says Windward. So you can follow along through this. You would go into IDAP and then hit launch courseware. You are uh, able to opt out if you don't want to use IDAP, but just be aware if you opt out of IDAP, you will not have access to the MyLab program for this course. Uh, so you can just follow through these instructions. I'm going to close them. So let's assume that you've gone through the IDAP registration, uh, which would be clicking on this vital source link. I got a lot of courses, so uh, there you go. And then you can either opt in, which is already checked, it's a default, or you can opt out. And that would be this bar here, which again, if you opt out, you will not have access to the MyLab course. Uh, if you want to opt in, all you have to do is go to Launch Courseware and register. 
make sure when you register that it is with your name that you typically use uh, because when I look at the roster in my lab I got to match it up to the names that are in La Lima. Now I'm going to hit launch courseware. Let's say that you went into launch, launch courseware you already registered. Then the next time you go into that vital source link and you hit launch courseware you will see something similar to this page that's coming up. Student links. So you can either go just into your assignments or you can go into the whole My Lab course. You can also enter the whole My Lab course from this tab here. Now I'm going to exit out of here because I'm not a student and I am going to go back to our La Lima page and change my view to that of instructor. I'm going to go back into the vital source link. Again, I'm not a student, so I can't enter into a student page. I'm going to launch courseware. And this is what I see. I see instructor tools and I see student links. Uh, so I could go into just my course home. I could go into announcements. I could look at assignments. I could click more, go into all this other stuff. I have tons of choices. Sorry, you guys, you only have three. <laughs> you can look at the Pearson announcements, you can go into your assignments, or you can look at your, your whole course. Instead of doing any of those links, I'm going to go straight to uh, Open My Lab and Mastering at the top. I'm just going to go to this orange tab, and that will give me my whole course. So now that we're done with the La Lima course, we're actually into the My Lab course. There's a lot going on here. I'm going to manage uh, my view and instead of looking at the, my instructor view, I'm going to look at your student homepage. So let's see, it's set right now for a month. The default I believe is two weeks, so you should see something similar to this. The most important thing you want to do is, and you can change your calendar if you wish, is you want to make sure that you have all the plugins installed to correctly run your homework. So you could do this from this help button where it says browser check or under entire course today there's a welcome message from my lab. So the entire course today will take away the calendar and it'll just list everything that's due. So you can read through this Pearson announcement but what's important is that in this announcement, there is a browser check. So you would just click on that browser check and you would, in fact, let me click on it, show you what I mean. Oh, mine's complete. I'm done. So you would click on the browser check and if there's anything that you have to up, upgrade, like your Adobe or something, it'll uh, tell you to download. Now these tabs here in the navigation bar, this would be instructor tabs. Notice where it has a, ones with a slash through. Those should not be visible on your screen. That's just uh, for instructors. What you're really concerned with is assignments. Assignments is where you'll have your homework and your exams. So anytime you click on assignments right now, I just have R1 through R5, but I'll have more up. Uh, and you click on one of these you can go ahead and start homework. Please feel free to work ahead. You can do a few questions. You can exit. You can come back later. Uh, doesn't matter. It should say up here what the penalty is, which is 1% deducted per day from questions completed after the due date. So under assignments, again, it's where your homework and your exams are going to be. Notice the orientation, the MyLab orientation that goes through how you answer questions in MyLab. doesn't have a due date. Uh, it's not graded. It's optional. So there really is no due date here. But the other assignments do have due dates. So um, September 4th, there's actually three assignments due. These should all be reviewed to you. Maybe there might be stuff in sets and interval notation that, that might not be familiar, but polynomials and factoring, rational expressions and exponents should be familiar to you. And in fact, I'm going to change this title to just sets because it really doesn't cover interval notation. Study plan is optional. If you feel that you need more practice, you can go into the study plan. It's not graded. Go into all chapters 
and then you can go ahead and choose what chapter you want to practice with. Let's say that you want to go into chapter R and you can choose your section and you can choose your con uh, concepts as well or you could just go into let's say R3 uh, eventually. <laughs> All the available homework assignments for R3 will eventually show up. I'm too lazy, I don't wanna wait anymore. But the study plan again is um, optional, it's not graded. The only graded assignments are in assignment. Everything else is optional resources for you. So as long as you can get into your assignments and do them, you're golden. The grade book is just your MyLab grades for the course. Look, I have nothing, so I have no grade, but it's not the grade for the course. This will just give you your results for assignments in my lab that you have submitted. Again, not the grade for your course. Your course grade will be in the La Lima grade book that we will go back to in just a minute. Uh, there is a variety of ways that you can look at the ebook if you want to. You can look through the e-text, chapter contents, multimedia library. There's a ton of ways that you can look at our ebook. Graphing resources here. There's accessibility resources if you need to have something that's ADA compliant. Um, if you have maybe a hearing impairment and you need captions, you can look at the resources that my lab has. They have some accessible PowerPoint lectures, video transcripts, and so on. Uh, tools for success, uh, just uh, some other resources that you may want to go through, all optional. If you would like to have a printed copy of the textbook, you could order one. It might be expensive. I think it's like over, could be over a hundred bucks. It's super expensive, uh, which is why we're just using the e-book e here because that's cheaper. And there's skills for success where you can talk about growth minds or read about growth mindset, college success, success modules and go through some other tools. I'm going to go back to the main menu and just remind you that assignments, this is where you do your assignments, grade book. This is where you review your grades. I have nothing submitted because I didn't do anything. So if you review in grade book, you cannot change anything. It's just for you to view what you've already submitted and your grade will only be on things that have already been submitted. So if you haven't done an assignment and it's past due, Typically in a class, you would be deducted and your grade would go down. Not on my lab. It only gives you a grade for what you submit. So it may be misleading and that's another reason why I don't use the my lab grade book. So I'm going to go back to our La Lima page and go into the navigation bar. This is the grade book that you will uh, have your course grade dependent upon. It has your MyLab homework, which will, I will update every week. Your written problem sets. Those are the graded problem sets in the syllabus. Your two exams, your final exam. We have our extra credit here, the CES survey, which is the end of semester survey. The exam one review, the exam two review, and also the final exam review. I just haven't posted it yet. And then your forums. This is what I see when I go in. Notice that week three, four, five, and six, I haven't opened them up for you guys yet. So again, let's go back to our student view. And go through announcements. You can access announcements from the navigation bar as well as that welcome page, the home page. Forums, you can access it here or on the home page. There is a question and discussion for student use. This is not graded. This is just for you guys to use. So you're free to post questions or discussion topics for the class. Anything graded, I will have linked to your grade book. So introduce yourself to the class is going to be your first forum. And that's going to be graded. It's five points each for the forums. We have an email link. So you can email myself under roles or you can email students in the class. The assignment link, that would be the student participation verification is the only assignment right now. 
And then we have Capico Tutoring and Tutor.com. Uh, those are the two programs that students tend to use most if they want to do online tutoring. And then our final two weeks up here. So I think I covered the basics of it. If you guys ha have any questions at all, please feel free to email at any time. And again, welcome to Math 135.